Welcome to this episode of Bounded in a Nutshell. Remember to take a moment to click on the link below to donate to a very special organization. Figure Skating in Harlem is the first organization in the world to combine the power of education with the grace and discipline of figure skating. It is dedicated to developing confidence, leadership, and academic achievement in young girls from low-income backgrounds. The numerous stories of success from its alumni owe a great deal to the unique blend of mentoring and self-expression that is championed by FSH. Remember, no donation is too small or too large to keep the dream alive for these exceptional young girls. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. They have a rhythm and a logic to them. Like mother, when you criticize and find fault in every last choice I make, I know you think you're doing the best for me, you're pushing me, but you make it almost impossible for me to see the love in that. All I see is a bully. Someone who's lost touch with gentleness and kindness, that is what I see. There are many other ways of being in yours. I just fail to understand it. I can't bear you. That is our relationship. That is the relationship we have earned. And it is entirely organic, so no. I will not wait. I cannot, because I am just like you. I know who I am. You know, most people don't have to make a step-by-step -step decision to stay alive. Most people just basically want to live. I'm not one of those people, not after Henry. So there will be a book and maybe it'll be the last thing I ever publish, but there will be a book because that is the last six years of my life on those pages and it's for Henry. What happened to Henry will have been seen, everything. Everything in life is about being seen or not seen, and eventually everything is seen. I am as sorry I am a writer as you are. I wish I'd been made differently. But as it stands, I am. Beautiful, oh, beautiful, Sarah. Sarah, the, the beautiful, wait, wait, what is the last the line you said? I, uh, there was something like, I'm, I'm not as blank oh, as I, you are. I am as sorry I am a writer as you are, but as it stands, I am. Uh, just say that one more time, I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. Um, I am as sorry I am a writer as you are, but oh, as it uh, stands, I am. I actually really? cut it off because it goes on. And she's like, I'm gonna go home, but I just, and uh, I'm sorry, I am a writer, as you are. Great, great. So what you did that I, I, I just think is, I mean, you did many things that I, I, I think are, are superb. You allowed yourself not to presuppose like an arc. We all do this when we're, when we're working on monologues. It's like we have an emotional place that we think it hits. And very often the problem is we start like going for that emotional place as soon as possible because right, you're so scared that you won't hit it, mm -hmm. that you sort of like start and you're, you're like, okay, I'm gonna kind of keep this thing in my gut alive so that when that emotional place comes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really have that reservoir. Mm -hmm. What you did, which was beautiful, is you avoided having some kind of, dramatic emotional place that was gonna kind of burst you out right mm -hmm. which is a complete i really applaud that but what i i'm gonna ask you to do in uh in in lieu of having that is having pieces of the text just become clear to me in terms of what's going on with you psychologically is this is this car horn uh, uh bothering you guys can you hear it? it? Beautiful. As long as I just feel like I'm, um, uh, I just feel sure that I'm not like just um, uh, screaming at you. Great. So, so now I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna ask of you just to 
go through the text a little bit more slowly so I can, um, uh, your pacing was quite good as well, but, but we, you know, we stayed in this very um, connected emotional place. And, and I don't want this, uh, I, I don't want this kind of burst to be something you're, you're looking for, but I do want a few of the ideas to really kind of resonate in you. And I want to see what happens with that. So, so um, I, that line, I can't bear you. Can you, can you, um, can you tell me what, like, can we, can we go through the beginning of the text? I'm going to just start you back off. And, um, and I want to, I want to get to that line and, and play back from there. Okay. Just, just start it again, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Start before the I can't bear you line or start it from I can't bear you? Uh, start from, from the very, very top. I've just right. lost our, my image for a second. Hold on one second. I've lost, um, fortunately, my screen has gone dark for one second. I'm coming right back. Mm. Uh, great. All right, Sarah, hold on. We're just getting right back. Um, great. Just start exactly the way you are. Just start the, start the beginning of the speech. Yeah. You're asking for my help. Uh -huh. Henry asked you for help. He made an awful, terrible, brutal mistake. And you shunned him. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop you there. Great, so I'm gonna allow you not to have so much at stake at the beginning in, okay. in the room, all right? So right there, just start from right where you are. You're asking, so she's just said, I really want you to help me. You gotta help me. And what yeah. do you say right away? You're asking for my help? Excellent, keep going. Henry asked you for help. He made an awful, terrible, brutal mistake and you shunned him. And with that, you have to live. Relationships are a hard earned thing. They have a rhythm and a logic to them. Like, mother, when you criticize and find fault in every last choice I make, for some Great. reason- I'm gonna stop you one more time, just because I want you to understand what I'm gonna ask you to do mentally. You say relationships are a hard-earned thing, right? And that's yeah. coming because you said, you asked me for your help, but you don't actually deserve any help. Is that, is that what she said? Yeah. Yeah. Connect those thoughts for me, Sarah. That's so, so that's all you have to, you, um, and this is a note for everybody, and this will be said a million times today. The person never knows, of course, in a monologue that they will be speaking that long. So yeah. I would urge you to figure out what the end of your thought is before you even reach probably five lines. And, and, and right, so, so what, so let's start again right away. Just for, uh, so I say, I want you to help me. I really need you to help me. What do you say? You're asking for my help? Right? Henry asked you for help. He made a terrible, awful, brutal mistake and you shunned him. And with that, you have to live. End of it. Do it once more, Sarah, just to that. Okay. And that's all. And, and you can pace it up a bit for me. Okay. That's all you were gonna say. There you go, start right away. I really need your help because you have fucking not You're given asking me- asking for my help? People. Henry asked you for help. He made an awful, terrible, brutal mistake and you shunned him. With that, you have to live. Take a breath. What's the next idea? Relationships are a hard-earned thing. They have a rhythm and a logic to them. Like, mother, when you criticize and find fault in every last choice I make. I know you tell yourself that you're pushing me. You want only the best for me. Do you make it almost impossible for me to see the love in that? All right, I'm gonna stop you again. I'm so sorry because I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just desperate for you to understand how to sort of group those thoughts you're doing yeah. beautifully. I'm just gonna bring up two things that occur. So, yeah. so because we're gonna go back again. Uh, yep. You're asking for my help. Uh, just tell me if this is, this is something I do all the time, so all the time. 
we start with the same rhythmic reading over and over again until we can figure out how to go through a different door at the beginning, right? Okay. So you're asking for my help, just start it right now. Just start it right now. And the only two things I'm gonna ask you to do is, um, uh, is allow yourself when you talk about the next idea, which relationships, this is something that you actually uh, have thought a lot about and your mother is coming up so fucking short. So this is, let me just tell you the way relationships work just because for some reason you didn't get that on the hard drive. So the right. next portion of the speech, Sarah, is like how relationships work. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to anchor your mind to different tasks, not just one task. Yes. Does that make sense? So the first task is to respond to my request for help, which is I really want you to help me. And you've got to help me. You're my kid. You have to help me. What does she say? What do you say in response? You're asking for my help? Excellent. Say that once more exactly the way. I want you to help me. What You're are you asking saying? for my help? Excellent. Keep going. Henry asked you for help. He made an awful, terrible, brutal mistake and you shunned him. With Excellent. that, you have to live. Relationships are a hard-earned thing. They have a, a rhythm and a logic to them. Excellent. Mother, when you criticize and find fault in every last choice I make, I, I know you tell yourself you're pushing me, you want only the best for me, but you make it almost impossible for me to see the love in that. All I see is a bully. Good. Someone who's lost touch with gentleness and kindness. That is what I see. Excellent. That's, that's all you were going to say. And yeah. then what do you say next? Keep going. Uh, that is what I see. There are many other ways of being and yours, I fail to understand it. I can't bear you. Excellent. That is our relationship. That is the relationship we have earned, and it is entirely organic. So no, I will not wait. I can't, because I am just like you. I know who I am. You know, most people don't have to make a step-by-step -step decision to stay alive. Most people just basically want to live. I'm not one of those people. Not after Henry. So there will be a book. Maybe it'll be the last thing I ever publish. But there will be a book because that is the last six years of my life on those pages. And it's for Henry. What happened to Henry will have been seen. Everything. Everything in life is about being seen or not seen, and eventually everything is seen. I'm as sorry I am a writer as you are. I wish I'd been made differently. But as it stands, I am. That was so good, Sarah. Do me one little favor, but this will be the last thing I'm going to ask you to do. And just everything, let me just drill this last point into my mother before I walk away. Everything in life is about seeing, what is that idea to me? What is that idea? What it, everything what is, in life is about being seen or not seen. Right, right. Yeah. Beautiful. I, I just, I just, I just, I think, I think that is the thing that is just, she's saturated with this reality and that's why she has to write. And so what you did was superb. You allowed yourself to be on the line. And I will talk about that later, but the ending I think is messier only because she, she needs to finish these, these sort of tenets of what she's experienced. So mm -hmm. that everything it just, just, it, 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 become, it, it becomes, um, I think, messier. And that's all I'm going to say. Just give me that line once, once more. That's all you think you were going to say, right? Yeah. What is the line? What is the line? Everything in life is about being seen or not seen. Great. And then what is she? She can't give it up. What does she say? What's the next thing? And eventually everything is seen. <laughs> I am as sorry I am a writer as you are. Excellent. I wish I'd been made differently, but as it stands, I am. 
does it. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> we can all uh, join the conversation again. Talk to me about um, how that felt for you. I don't mean uh, um, like emotionally because this is a whole nother conversation and very rarely, very rarely do you actually feel <laughs> maybe one out of 10 times like uh, you sort of feel aligned with how it went. So we're not, I'm not talking about like whether it felt good. I'm, I'm actually asking you, does it feel like the direction I gave you is something that opened a door in terms of how you can take your beautiful emotional life to another level of storytelling. That's what's interesting to me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, this is a monologue that I've like worked on for a bit and I kind of come at it a lot of different ways, uh, depending yeah. on where I am when I'm doing it, to be honest, it's been more emotional, less emotional, but yeah, kind of breaking it down to like the actual conversation, like, what she needs really needs to get yeah like that's a totally different new approach that i haven't like really done yet so that's for all of us that's what a director usually does right but that's yeah. the only thing that you can count on is understanding the way somebody thinks when you're in a state of um uncertainty right yeah and that's, that's the architecture of what you can try to hold on to excellent work sarah excellent thank excellent. you Sure. Next person. Oh, beautiful. Yes, we apply. I, I just applaud all of you. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, beautiful. Thank you. Next. Who's next? Serena. Great. Cool. Hi, Serena. What are you going to do? Oh, tell me a little about yourself first. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm going to do speaker view. Okay, great. Um, hi. hi. Um, I, I'm Serena. I just graduated from NYU a semester early in December. What studio um, were you at? I was at Atlantic and then I did the Amsterdam program and then I did some Stone Street. Beautiful. Um, yeah, nice little mix. Um, and I, I escaped New York about a month ago and I'm in California. Ah, like me. Okay, great. What are you going to do today? Uh, this is from Dance Nation. It's Zuzu. Okay. People say that I dance with a lot of grace, that I'm, I'm beautiful, you know, and above average and stuff. But here's what they don't say. They don't say that I'm sensational. They don't say that they could watch me dance forever. They don't cry when they watch me dance. When they watch Amina dance, they, they cry. I know because I cry when I watch Amina dance. My mom asked me if I would do a dance for her cancer. Yeah, she saw this documentary about this woman who did a dance and it cured her cancer. So she asked me if I would do a dance for her cancer. And you know, my mom is not usually like that, but at the time she was, she was feeling really emotional and she kept breaking down like all the time. So I did a dance for my mom and her cancer. And I tried to make it the best dance I had ever done. I tried to like feel things with my arms and my legs. And I tried to make people feel things with my arms and my legs. But it was, it was just an ordinary dance. A lot of people didn't know it was about my mom's cancer at all. They thought it was about whatever our dances are usually about. Flowers, sailors, you know, not cancer. And I didn't make them cry. I didn't make myself cry. I, I, I don't even think I made my mom cry. I mean, she said that she liked it, but she didn't cry. And I didn't cure her cancer, so. Actually, her cancer got a lot worse after that. It was just an ordinary dance. Great, that's, be that's the end of the piece, right, Serena? Be it's a beautiful piece, it's a great piece for you. What, what's the first three lines? What's, what are the three lines up until it's above average, the word above average? Yep, people say that I dance with a lot of grace that I'm beautiful and above average. Great, great, great. Is above average, what does she feel about that? 
it's it's a good feeling it definitely feels good but it's not the highest it's not it's not the best it's not it's not right. number one great and what she what you did above average was like your uh brand, you were what the way you did it, it's like you're branded just ab above average like just that's just not not great right the yeah. marker is just 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 above average that's yeah. the way you did it the first time i think i mean there was this sense of um disappointment in yourself that i that I think actually was was like a lovely thought about it. So mm -hmm. so what happened and what always happens is we uh, we always, as we were saying before, try to figure out like the emotional state yeah. of the piece, and then we get kind of swimming in the same emotional state. It's totally, as I said, this is what this whole class is about is how to trust that we can tell a really beautiful moving story without swimming in that same place the whole time. Just yeah. start the piece exactly the way you are now. There's okay. no, there's nothing to feel uh, bad about. You are above average. That's going to be fine. And just tell yeah. me the story of this dance because you are above average. That's all. Oh, Chuck, did you need to say yeah, something? Yeah, I have a quick thing. Can you, Serena, can you make sure you really have a strong sense of who it is you're, you're speaking to? Because at the beginning, it seemed almost like you were speaking to us of your... Yes, I, I, yes, have totally. Have a really totally. strong sense of who you're speaking to. And I think that will add something okay beautiful that's so chuck you should jump your body right into this conversation whenever you i love watching you do the work jessica <laughs> i just love that uh, <laughs> <laughs> so okay people say that i dance with a lot of grace that i'm i'm beautiful and above average and stuff excellent keep going <laughs> but here's what they don't say they don't say i'm sensational they don't say that they could watch me dance forever. They don't cry when they watch me dance. But when they watch Amina dance, they cry. End of it. Wait, okay, great. I'm gonna stop you right there. So, yeah. so, um, so great. Um, the, who are you talking to actually? Is it a, is it a monologue direct address? Yeah, 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 yeah. There are some director address to the audience. Mm -hmm. I remember that, That's a, it's an incredible piece. Um, yeah. um, great. Great, great. Um, so great. So let's just put it into circumstances because oh. because Chuck is right, and it's that's a whole. This would be a whole another class. But direct address is so hard, and Chuck should actually yeah. leave that class because he's probably done many plays with <laughs> direct address. But um, but um, we do. I think if Chuck back me up on this. We do have to just think of that question that was asked, and you know, and we we just have to probably fabricate a question which could easily be. Um, it, do you um, do you think you should be dance captain? Um, for this uh, group that is going to go into the hospital. Yeah, the yeah, hospital. and it's also about when it's a direct address, whether it's Shakespeare or anything like that. You've got to almost imagine the question, like Jessica saying, the question that's been asked, but just as specifically, who has asked the question? Mm -hmm. So it's not a multitude of two hundred or five hundred faces, but mm -hmm. a specific person that has asked that that you're talking to, and that will just zero in. It will give that quality of never being a speech. It's it's a, a conversation that has already started, probably. Yeah. Not. And when you come to direct address, it isn't that it started there. It's just when the audience happened to join the conversation. Does that make sense? Totally. I love right. that. Great. That's a great. That's great. That's great. Mm. So 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 let's just set something up. So I'm here yeah. and I'm wondering if there was a chance you could come and dance for these these COVID patients. They they love. They love any kind of entertainment they've been here and they're very sick. Great, yeah, yeah, no. I mean, people say that I dance with a lot of grace. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm beautiful, <laughs> I'm average and stuff. Yeah, but here's what they don't say. They, they don't say I'm sensational. They don't say that they could watch me dance forever. You know, they don't, they don't cry when they watch me dance. When they watch Amina dance, they, they, they cry. Great, and I'm gonna ask you to, to, still, to still sell yourself during this section because what's yeah. happening um, yeah, totally, yeah. quickly is mm -hmm. that you take yourself out of the candidacy to be valuable to yeah. anybody. Right, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Right. So, so great. So, uh huh. Um, is there a chance that you could come? Let's just keep working on this. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Go ahead. No. Yeah. <laughs> People say that I I dance with a lot of grace. That I'm yeah. I'm I'm beautiful and 
Great. And really list those things for me, Serena. So you do, you do have, what's the first thing you have? Uh, people say that I dance with a lot of grace. Uh-huh. And what other qualities? That I'm beautiful and I'm above average and, and stuff. Uh-huh. Great. Good. Yeah, but here's what they don't say. They, I mean, they don't say that I'm sensational. They don't uh-huh. say that you could watch me dance forever. They don't, they don't cry when they watch me dance. When they watch Amina dance, they, they cry. Great, keep moving. Keep I, I know because I cry when I want to watch Amina dance. My mom, uh, she asked me if I would do a dance for her cancer. She saw this documentary about this woman who did a dance and it cured her cancer. So uh-huh. she asked me if I would do a dance for her cancer. Uh-huh. You know, and my, mom, my mom's not usually like that, but at the time she was, she was feeling really emotional. And she kept breaking down like all the time. So I did a dance for my mom and her cancer. Great. I'm just going to start you back with the story of my mom asked me to do a dance for her cancer. Yeah. Great. That's a great story because you yeah. did that dance. Great. Start from just where you are right now. Mm. Yeah. And your mom is very strong. So it was kind of a very special experience, right? Yeah. yeah. And going back to what Jessica said with Sarah, remember, although it's another beat, it's mm. still latched onto the fact of the beginning of this where someone's asked you if you would dance. So it's mm. still connected to, you know, in fact, someone, I, I've been asked to dance before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Make sure that yeah. that's a really important thing is that beats are really crucial, mm. really crucial to let us know when beats have changed. But understand, usually it's still the same narrative, right? Yeah. And the the yeah. reason for talking about your mom is the same reason that someone has asked you whether you could dance or not. It's not a new story. Yeah. 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 Totally. Remember that. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Thank you. Great. Did anyone else, did anyone ask you to dance? Like for yeah, my, my mom asked me uh, if I would do a dance for her cancer. Excellent. She saw, yeah. So she saw this documentary about this woman who did a dance and it cured her cancer. So she asked me if I would do a dance for her cancer. You know, my mom's not usually like that, but at the time she was, she was feeling really emotional. She kept breaking down like all the time. So I did a dance for my mom and her cancer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I tried to make it the best dance I had ever done. I-, I-, I tried to like, I tried to like feel things with my arms and-, and my legs. And I tried to make people feel things with my arms and my legs. But it was, just an ordinary dance. A lot of people didn't know it was about my mom's cancer at all. Wait, I'm gonna take you back just yeah. to the point, right? Because we all feel when uh, we get bigger than the text, the, the text actually can't hold that much emotion. Let's mm. put in the text. It, it can't hold that much emotion in that, because it's, it's, it's as Chuck is saying, it's still this person, I, yeah. um, right? So take it back from like, I tried. I think that's where, you, you, and you can feel it. Excellent. So oh, you try, what did you have? What did you do? Wait, how did you do the dance? You try. I take a breath. Try to make people feel things with my arms and my legs, but it was just an ordinary dance. You know, a lot of people didn't know it was about my mom's cancer at all. They thought it was about whatever our dances are usually about flowers, sailors, you know? Not cancer. And I didn't make them cry. I, I, I didn't make myself cry. I, I, I don't even think I made my mom cry. I mean, she said that she liked it, but she didn't cry. And I didn't cure her cancer, so. Actually, her cancer got a lot worse after that. I'm gonna dial you back one more time. You, yeah. you're beautifully but would you, what do you, what is your experience of this when i uh, i can feel myself you know like wanting like what you were saying like wanting to like prove the moments like like prove that like like show that like okay here is like where i'm actually feeling something and like yeah. here is like the like tr- trying so hard to communicate the idea that like okay now this hurts me and it's like if I, I focusing so much on that is not not helpful that's not right we go because it's so hard it, uh, we don't have any anchor 
right? right. So we, so, and the anchor again is the way the text works. So just oh. right there, mm -hmm. just as you are, uh huh. What is just the very simple sentence to sentence? I tried, right? Just, you don't have to act it, just tell me the text. I try to make people feel things with my arms and my legs. Great. So start that line again, and just on a very, um, just very uh, precisely, tell me your recipe for doing this dance. So the dance was I first I I tried to add these ingredients that would make her. Yeah. First yeah I, I I I tried to slow and simple, very simple. Yeah. Keep going. With my arms and my legs. Uh huh. Keep going. And I tried to make people feel things with my arms and my legs. Uh huh. Keep going. But it was just an ordinary dance. I mean, you a lot of people. With and it was just what? It was just an ordinary dance. Yeah. Keep going. A lot of people didn't know it was about my mom's cancer at all. They, they right. thought it was about whatever our dances are usually about. Which is not, yeah. You know, sailors. Uh huh. Not cancer. Keep going. Uh huh. And I, I didn't make them cry. Which is I, I didn't make myself cry. Right. I don't even think I made my mom cry. I mean, she said that she liked it, but she didn't cry. And I didn't cure cancer, so. <laughs> Actually, her cancer got a lot worse after that. Keep going. It was, it was just an ordinary dance. Beautiful, oh, that's such a <laughs> Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Chuck, what were you gonna say, honey? I was just going to say it's it's incredible that because what you were trying to show us and act when the moments arrived, I saw I saw completely in your eyes while you were still telling me the story. Yeah. All I needed was to see the pain in you. I didn't need you to mm. show me the pain because it loses track of what the whole point of this conversation is. Yeah. I mean, you're actually working right now with one of the best actors out there doing that, Jessica, that a uh, hundred, Jessica, you can close your ears if you want. A hundred things go on in her eyes while she continues to speak to you and mm. keep it grounded in what the actual real situation is. Yeah. You know, you can go through her work and see that a lot, but actually the most recent thing I saw of it that, that just came to mind was we were watching a, a show called The Outsider, right? Mm -hmm. With the, on yes. And there's a wonderful moment in Jason Bateman talking to the sheriff, to the lead guy, Ben Mendelsohn about how he, he, his son, how he took care of his son when his son was struggling with baseball. And this is a heightened moment where he's in jail. He's been accused of murder. And he just tells the story of how he got his son to go out there and practice baseball and practice with him because he kept being hit. And all he did, and he just came, came out of it. But it was, we knew the situation of what was going on. And yet it was still a conversation. We've got to be able to trust that Hmm. we can speak through this stuff without showing it you know what i mean your yeah. eyes will tell us what's going on as you know i don't know jessica if you want to add to that but the so moment you started to show us that thing it stopped being a conversation with the person mm -hmm. always remember guys it's a really hard thing um the audience doesn't want to see you cry they want to cry for you and they will cry for you when they know what you're talking about <laughs> you know what i mean Right. It's not for you. It's, the, it's not for yourself. It's 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 for them. It's for the other person. It's yeah. a hard thing to do because we mm -hmm. want those moments and we feel them. And as intelligent actors, we immediately know where they are. Yes. You gotta. You gotta. Anyway, Jessica. You're sniffing them out. No, that's it. You know, you're sniffing it out, and you're like, that's mm -hmm. the moment. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, we uh, and and you'll see now the way the world is right now, guys. People don't want to tell. I just want to always urge you when you're listening to a very moving podcast or a story on uh that's just an audio story most you can hear it often and that it, it, sometimes even more than than watching but people don't want to tell sad stories they want to tell a story in which things are okay and even the most tragic story of someone in in a concentration camp or someone who is fleeing from a war they always start that story in a place when things are okay who would like to go next uh, diane are you yeah I, I sense your energy coming toward that camera <laughs> yeah sure i'll go 
Um, tell us a little about yourself. Um, just one moment. I, I told my mom I'd tell her when I was gonna go. <laughs> oh, please, my mom. Yeah, just one second. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and guys, in future, if you want to go, just jump in and just say me because we the screens aren't necessarily all up, so we can't see hands going up and all that stuff. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. A question before we start. Um, what if the scene or monologue, but mostly scene, um, asks for emotion, for the actor to show that emotion. And it's very clear and it says, okay, now here the actor breaks down. Mm -hmm. How do you approach it like that without still pushing that um, emotion or trying to reach that level? That's a, that's a great question. Um, I have to say that I don't always advocate doing a monologue for an audition uh, in which you have to break down. It's very difficult to control the circumstances of an audition. And so really getting upset and really banking on the fact that the casting person uh, is going to be in the right frame of mind to receive you really breaking down is very tricky. Um, but if you did choose that, I would try to create an architecture that is, um, that has, um, generally a quietness to the piece so um so that you are actually physically not you know that that this kind of hysteria or whatever is not the only thing you're representing because some people are actually amazing at breaking down um and but i i think what's more interesting to watch is something that chuck was talking about which is the way we are as storytellers and mm -hmm. you know sobbing is just usually one part of a story does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah thank you sure uh, all right go for it diane hi um my name is diane i'm from toronto i think everyone's from the states but i'm from canada love canada um, yeah that's it <laughs> and uh, i'm excited to try this beautiful and uh where did did you study acting in in toronto oh. Yes. Um, so I actually went to film school, but <laughs> for the past four years, I've been working with private coaches. So yeah. just, yeah, I was just like, I mean, I would have justified putting it into theater school this amount of money. So why not just like continue on as if I was in like a post-secondary education? Ah, wonderful. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm so excited. Now, what, 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 what piece are you doing today? Um, so I'm doing clear glass marbles or glass marbles from this, uh, it's a series of monologues from Talking With by Jane Martin. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's a great, it's a throwback to another era. I'm excited to hear that. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> oh, the speaker. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to voice it out because it helps. I'm nervous. <laughs> okay. Um, The day my mother found out that she was dying, she asked me to go out and get her these clear glass marbles. Dad and I didn't even know that she was ill, and that was nothing new because whenever you ask my mother if she was ill, she'd throw things at you. The sesame buns, the editorial page, a wad full of hair ribbons. She'd say, do not suggest things to suggestible people. <laughs> so I got her the marbles, and she put them in this clear glass bowl. Apparently, the doctors had given her three months to live, and she said, great store by doctors. I wouldn't give you two bills for one of those smiley young guys, she'd say. I like a nice, stern, furrowed physician. So she counted out 90 clear glass marbles and put them in a clear glass bowl and set them on her bedside table. And then she went out and she bought $1,200 in nightgowns. She said, in my family, you aren't dying until you take to your bed. And that, my darlings, is what I'm doing. And she did. We hashed it out. My dad couldn't possibly believe that this is what was happening. But the doctors eventually convinced him. I told her it was a little medieval to be up there lying in a state. But she said she wanted to be closer to what she loved. Us. And I asked her what she planned, what she planned to do up there. And she said, study French visit with us, generally mull, and call some pals. Study French. 
She had made a promise to herself that she would die bilingual. And all day, every day, she would hold one of these marbles in her hand. Why? Well, she said it made the day last longer. Yeah, we'd have dinner with her every night. And we'd talk issues. And, and she said she was too far gone to talk about gossip or what we ate for lunch. And then soon after, we'd turn in. And uh, right before I drifted up to sleep, I'd hear this. Every night. And on the third or fourth night, I saw one on the ground and I went to pick it up and she said, leave it. And I said, why? She said, I'm learning to let go. <laughs> yeah, she passed the time. She wrote letters, 50, 60 of them. And then later on, we found out that they were sort of informal goodbyes and each one of them included a little recipe. It got hard near the end. And she asked dad and I to give her a little bit more time alone. Uh, she never throughout the entire thing complained about the pain. Never. She called it the chills. And then I was in bed two weeks ago, Wednesday. And I heard this. Dad and I ran in there, but she was gone, dead. When the emergency medical people got there, they gave me this, it was in her hand. I hold it in my hand. I hold it all day. It makes the day last longer. Thank you. Oh, beautiful. Okay, this is, it's so interesting, this piece, I remember this from years ago, and um, uh, I don't know when this was written, but I do think it was in maybe in the 90s. Is this, uh, it doesn't matter, uh, it's, but it's a series of monologues, so it's, it's, so does it say at the beginning, like Chuck's question, um, uh, who she's speaking to? No, but I just, um, it says that she's standing at the end of the table with a lamp on holding, so I made it, I, like a, a decision to say that she's speaking to maybe like they're trying to sell the house and she's and someone goes like oh this is a beautiful glass like family oh. heirloom thing and oh, then yeah yeah, yeah. that's so great I, oh, like somebody that like, she doesn't know but yeah she, like, yeah 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 so this text is so ripe with um little hand holds for you and i want to alert you to that i commend you for for sort of taking what we were doing with Serena, which is not to uh, um, uh, kind of suppose an emotional state because somebody's, particularly your mother, is dying in it, right? Um, and, and, uh, and, and it's very interesting, you as a person have a very natural, accessible quality in the way you uh, connect to us, just, just, talking to us at the very beginning. What, right before you started, you were so funny. You said, what did you say about? Um... Oh, I said, I'm gonna voice it out because I just thought, I was like, it was so overwhelming the amount of like energy that was like stifled in that nervousness that I was like, yeah. I have to say it. Uh -huh. Because it's just What's like, the... I felt like it was right there. <laughs> What's the first line you say? What's the first line you say? Um, Oh, wow. Uh, when, when my mother found out she was dying, she asked me to go out and get her these clear glass marbles. Keep going. Keep going with the speech. Uh-huh. What did you say? Um, uh, my dad and I didn't even know that she was sick. And that was nothing new because she she never, she, it, whenever you asked her if she was ill, she'd throw things at you. Like, <laughs> keep going. The sesame buns or the editorial page or, or a wad full of hair ribbons. Uh -huh. So I got her the clear glass marbles and she put them in the clear glass bowl. Uh, and, and apparently, right. apparently the doctors had given her 90 days to live. And she said, great store by doctors. She said that they were the greatest gift that we got from the Old Testament. 
Wait, I'm just going to alert you to the fact yeah. that when you, after you finish the, the, you got the marbles, right? And then this other little tidbit is that she just had the 90 days. And so I just want you to allow yourself to be done talking after you describe, before you say she had the 90 days to live, you're just done talking. You don't need to tell that she had 90 days to live. <clears throat> What's happening to you psychologically is you know you have so much to say. So we... Uh, so we get on this path with you where it's just so much information. And I think, I, as I always say, the person never knew they were going to speak that much. So just your end, your start of that is exactly the way you should start. Start it again from the beginning. Okay. What is that you have there? This, what? <laughs> um, the day my mother found out she was dying, she asked me to go out and get her these clear glass marbles. Uh -huh. So start it again because... Yeah. I, it's, it's, wait, are you nervous? Uh, I think it's kind of gone now. Now I'm like in the rhythm. Excellent. But, Start the speech right now. Um, the day my mother found out she was dying, she asked me to go out and get her these clear glass marbles. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And dad and I didn't even know that she was ill. And that was nothing new because whenever you asked her if she was ill, she'd throw things at you. Like what? Like what? Sesame buns, uh -huh. uh, the editorial page, uh -huh. uh, a wad that? full of ribbons that you'd put in your hair. Uh-huh. Uh, but I got her these marbles and she put them in a clear glass bowl. And? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, apparently the doctors had given her 90 days to live. And she said, great store by doctors. She said that they were the greatest gift to us since the Old Testament. She said she wouldn't give them two bills for these smiley young guys. She said she'd prefer a, a, a good furrowed physician. Great. So just give me the information again about the 90 days. And you go into her experience of doctors and her relationship to them. Why? Because, I'm um, sorry, uh, because it really describes her character. It's like, she's like, this is, it's like, if someone says 90 days to you, you're like, no, well, maybe it could be something else. But she was like an old school woman. She's like, she believes that these people were the people that we had to believe in. They were like, she, she said all her heart and soul in those people and so what is the text again she, just exactly as you are what did oh, they say well, what? she said great store in doctors because she said that they were like the greatest thing that since the old testament she wouldn't she wouldn't put two bills on a, on a she wouldn't put two bills on a young smiley guy she'd say i want a good furrowed physician so uh -huh. she counted 90 clear glass marbles and then she put them in she a clear glass bowl. Wait, she 90, 90 clear glass marbles. Oh, because she was going to die in 90 days. Keep going. She, she put them on her bedside table. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then she went out and she bought $1,200 worth of nightgowns. <laughs> she said that in her family, you weren't dying until you were in your bed. And, and that's what she did. <laughs> We hashed it out. Um, my dad really couldn't believe that that's what was happening, but eventually the doctors convinced him. And I told her it was kind of medieval to be up there lying in a state. And I asked her what she planned on doing. Uh -huh. And she said, learn French. Uh -huh. And, and, visit with us and uh, generally just mull maybe call some pals and she held one of these marbles in her hand every day and i asked her why and she said because it made the days last longer now uh, yeah and we went to dinner with her every night and we talked about issues and she didn't want to talk about the gossip she was too far gone but then we'd turn in and Right before I'd fall asleep, I'd hear this. Every night. Huh. And two or three nights later, I saw one on the ground. I went to go pick it up. And she said, leave it. And I said, why? And she said, because I'm learning to let go. <laughs> she really passed the time. She wrote letters, like 60 or, or 70 of them. Great, and, and I'm just gonna, you, you're doing beautifully. I'm, I'm jotting down what the sort of architecture is in my mind. 
And after that marble drop, so, so now I can feel in you that you're on like a plateau with it. And what you just need to do in your mind is say she was learning to let go. And that is really the end of the speech. Mm -hmm. And then what happens after is what happens after. Just give me, uh, she held, uh, what is the line she held? The she held the marble in her hand every day. So that's a new idea. So that, let me just, let me just remind you that she got those, she got, she got the news that she had 90 days. Then she bought the 90, just, just make sure that because I asked you all those questions, I want you to keep, right? So, so she, you got the, you, you got the nine, the notice that it was 90 days you had to live. Then she got the 90 um, clear glass marbles. And now I've talked to you a lot about her life. And now I just want to remind you, she had those 90 marbles, right? And what did she do with them? What's then she what? The 90 marbles, she what? Put them in a clear glass. Oh, towards the end, no, she held them in her hand. You said she what? She, she, yes, she held them in her hand every day. For why? Because she said that it made the day last longer. And, and then what do you say next? Uh, we would sit down and have dinner with her. Excellent. So that's a whole new thing. Oh, so we're right. We finished with the marbles, right? I just have to tell you one other thing is what the character I think is yeah. doing. Are you yeah. sort of following what I'm? Um, yeah. I'm totally feeling what you're saying. Exactly. So I'm just kind of drilling in why I'm doing this. Yes. So, oh, wait, right, right. Okay, so the dinner, what, what were you saying about the dinner? Well, we would sit down and have dinner with her every night. Excellent. Great. Keep going. We'd sit down and have dinner with her every night, and we'd talk about the shoes. And why the shoes? Well, she said she was too far gone to talk about gossip or what we ate for lunch. Right. <laughs> Keep going. And then soon after, we'd turn in. And uh, uh, right before I drift off, I'd hear this every night. Yeah. And on the third or fourth night, I went and I saw one on the ground. I went to pick it up and I said, and then she said, leave it. And I said, why? And she said, because I'm learning to let go. She passed the time. She wrote letters, like 60 or 70 of them. And then and later on, we found out that they were like little informal goodbyes. <laughs> and each of them included a little recipe. Wait, guys, are other people having this trouble with her internet? Okay, let's jump. We can come back to her hopefully at the end. Does anyone want to jump in straight away? I can go. Oh, there, Kayvon, there's the man. You go. <laughs> oh, well, introduce yourself and all that. Tell me about you. Uh, my name is Kayvon. Uh, I graduated also from NYU in um, the fall of 2018. I was at Atlantic as well. Uh, uh -huh. Chuck was uh, my Shakespeare teacher, such a great class. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I started a theater company after, um, after I graduated. So I've just been doing that in addition to creating work and also auditioning for work. So Beautiful. Okay, thank you. I'm excited to um, just work with you. What, what um, piece are you doing? So I'm doing a piece from uh, this play called Dreams by Wajdi Muawad. It's the same guy that wrote uh, Scorched. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's that. This morning, I was thinking about my inability to cry. And, yeah, I have thousands of reasons to shed tears. And... Among these reasons, one dominates all the others. I, I can't love. I don't know how to love. I'm incapable of love. Loving is beyond me. I can't believe that somebody would love me. No one has ever loved me. I have never loved no one can ever love me. When it comes to love, I'm like a man dying of thirst in the desert. As far as he can see, nothing but dunes and mirages, the only oasis. He runs, driven by his thirst. He runs and, and sand fills his mouth down to his lungs, down to his parched liver. So the philosopher tells me reflect, the anthropologist tells me observe, 
the wise man tells me accept and the psychoanalyst tells me recognize. And all I want is to have someone to touch my skin and leave a mark of affection out of love. I, I walk and I think of all the lovers sleeping in each other's arms. I mean, I'm not them, I'm already beyond this world. But I contemplate the world, and the world as it seems to me doesn't disgust me. Nor do I want it to disgust me. Even with all of its horrors. The wars, the rapes, the massacre, the injustice, the spilled blood. It doesn't disgust me. Loneliness has thickened my skin so the world can no longer disgust me. Oh, wow. So this is so inter such an interesting piece. Uh, tell me a little bit, this is a really interesting piece. Tell me a little bit about um, the way it's written on the page. Is it written like mm. a poem or how is it laid out on the page? Yeah, so it's it's kind of written out like a poem. It's kind of where almost like there's like a word or two that would be like on the next line. It isn't like, you know, yes. traditional kind of like, right. um, it's, it's really a magical realistic play. Um, it's about this uh, author who's in a hotel room, this abandoned hotel room, and he's trying to write this story and all of his characters are coming to life and his characters are basically shadows or kind of projections of himself. And so it's kind of like a, you know, a play about like self-discovery and also like trying to create the story and kind of having like all these different characters who are really different parts of you kind of all coming together into this one room to be able to help create this story. How interesting. Uh, could, is there a way you could share the image of the, of the, of the text? So guys, there, because I used to gravitate to this kind of text, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's tricky. The writer is trying to give you a rhythm. The writer, usually in this kind of thing, particularly mm -hmm. in magical realism, is trying to give, up, give you a rhythm. And, and in their mind, and, and, and a good writer is absolutely right, there is an authenticity and it, and it is trying to mirror that, that, that piece of text, the way, act, the way human beings speak, right? And mm -hmm. I just want to see it so I can see. I, I, think it is what, I think it is what I'm thinking of. It may not be. But the only way to sort of get to a very full place with this kind of text is actually to work really precisely within mm -hmm. the structure the writer is giving you. Chuck, you can weigh in on this as we're looking for that text because it's very similar to Shakespeare, yeah? It's one of those um, damned if you do, damned if you don't sort of situations with texts like that is that there is a reason, every time you see text like that, there's a reason they've written it like that, Kayvon. And I think if you remember when we were in class with Shakespeare, it's like there is the intellectual connection to it to see, oh, something has happened here there is the uh, sort of like uh, scholarly connection as what is he doing that you will go to lectures mm -hmm. and find. But at the end of the day, there's an actor, there's a human being that has to make this sound human to the people listening, mm -hmm. right? So the first step mm -hmm. is always to look at it as uh, magical realism is going, recognize that's what it's doing, recognize the patterns of what he's doing with that. But at the same time, you have to use those patterns to find what is the human explanation for it you know I, I i don't know this text but for instance you'll hear rules and stuff about a mid-stopped line in shakespeare and they'll tell you oh that's when you leap onto the second half of it or you take a pause in a caesura i don't if i see an actor just take a pause that's all that is a pause but if mm -hmm. you come to that point before the point and the pause is coming up, you know it's coming up and you show me something happening to you that makes that pause human, yeah. I don't feel like I'm listening to text. So mm -hmm. I think what Jessica is talking about is like, if he's doing this two, two word thing that joins to the other line, we know he's doing that. What is that telling you he's trying to do there? Is it that he's thinking about one thing, but he's already feeling something else, or he's feeling one thing, but already thinking about something. You've got to find, and there are no answers for that. You just have to, it's like when a director says, come in with choices, that's what this is about. Yes, it's mm. a great exercise. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can you share that in a chat? Do you know how to do that, Kivan? Um, oh, okay. here we yeah, go. Yeah, we've got it. Okay. Beautiful, okay. thank got you it. so okay. much.
Oh, this is wonderful. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to ask us all to look at the way this text works. Um, and I'm going to just read it down. Um, uh, I just want to, um, I want to just see, I'm just going to read it out loud, actually, just for my own ears to see. I, I do think, of course, he's trying to make it sound like um, the way this person speaks. Uh, this is in no way a line reading because I don't even know what I'm doing. I have thousands of reasons to shed, shed tears. And among these reasons, one dominates all the others. Write that reason so I can exist. I can't love. I don't know how to love. I'm incapable of love. I can't believe that someone loves me. I have never loved. Loving is beyond me. No one has ever loved me. No one can love me. When it comes to love, I'm like a, die, a man dying of thirst in the desert. And as, as far as he can see, nothing but dunes and mirages, the only oasis. He runs, driven by his thirst. He runs and sand fills his mouth down to his lungs, down to his parched liver. So the philosopher tells me, reflect. The anthropologist tells me, observe. The wise man tells me, accept. The psychoanalyst tells me, recognize. And all I want is to have someone touch my skin and leave a mark of affection out of love. And I walk and I think of all the lovers sleeping in each other's arms. I'm not them. I am already beyond this world. I contemplate the world and the world as it appears to me doesn't disgust me, nor do I want it to disgust me with all its horrors, the wars, the rapes. So I'm just look, I'm just doing that and as an example of what I would do over and over again to find mm -hmm. my way into this, to hear the way it works as the way someone thinks. And I would do that many, many times. I'm curious what you did, Kivan, to, to find your way inside of it. Um, I think one of the things that I was like trying to figure out like a good solid balance of is that because this is, you know, a more recent piece. I think this was written in 2007. So I was kind of trying to see where I could meet that poetic kind of classical structure of it with a more contemporary type voice. Right. And I think, and I, and I think like, you know, kind of doing what you were saying that, you know, kind of just going over and over again and thinking like, where can logically two thoughts kind of coincide, but still honor the fact that it's on a different line. And I think that sometimes that when I want to have like a more contemporary voice that I tend to blend it, like a few of those lines together in order to kind of give it a more naturalistic type sounding voice rather than, you know, kind of honoring that um, right. the magical realistic kind of classical thing. I think that's very admirable that, well, and very in intuitive that you're trying to make it grounded because it's, right? So it's so poetic a piece, which I'm sure this is something Chuck would speak to in terms of Shakespeare or any poetry are, mm -hmm. are and, and it connects back to what I was saying when we know something is emotional or is sort of out of, um, is not colloquial, is not just Mm -hmm. you know, sort of of the earth, we, we have to take the mickey off of it in, in, ter in, in order to be able to, to um, really deliver it um, as dialogue, as, as, not as dialogue, but as, um, as uh, something we own. It's about making these poetic texts um, something you own without having to do a lot of emotional gymnastics to justify saying it. So, right, we say something very mm -hmm. lofty. It takes a lot of emotion to justify saying something lofty. And so you're trying to anchor it in something super real. And, and I, I think, think that... If, if I can jump on what Jessica is saying about anchoring yeah. in super real, it's the reason why these things, structures were created. You know, going back to the masks in Asia, that emotion is so ugly and too much to see sometimes they created the mass so you could funnel 
the thought and your what your your meaning. And I think when you see structure like this, it's not getting in your way. It's actually making your life kind of simpler to be able to for all that stuff to be living in you and giving your structure to speak it through or else it be it would be that lofty poetic stuff that is good for you the actor mm. but not very good for the listener you know or the watcher mm. you know mm -hmm. so it's funny that it, it, when you started doing the scene it was really weird because i, I it, you were you're a naturally gifted um emotional actor remembering you mm. but it wasn't quite sitting with what you were saying you know you know when you were mm -hmm. doing it it was like there was this thing going on and it wasn't quite sitting mm. so if jessica is cool with this it'd be really great if you took what you were feeling and just almost almost read that text you have to us with all that stuff you're feeling I really embrace the structure. I don't know, Jessica, what do you think to see? I it think that's that. wonderful. I think that's a great idea. Do me a favor as you're doing it. If it's possible to not go so fast that you can't, um, that you can't establish a little bit of architecture in it, Kivan. So, mm -hmm. um, so he says, what are the first four lines? Can you just say them to me? Uh, this morning, I was thinking about my inability to cry. And yet uh -huh. I have a thousand of reasons to shed tears. Uh-huh. And among that's these it. reasons. Mm -hmm. That's it. I, that's I, great. Yeah. That's the, we can use the same, um, I want you to do exactly what Chuck asked. And we can use the same little notes to self that I've been asking of everybody. He does not expect to speak this long. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and among those notes, actually, there's, a, uh, there's this, this, and this. And I'm going to write those things down. Doesn't he say I write it down? And right. Yeah. So so right. So I want you to try as you're working to establish a way this person is thinking. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. it's really um, that's always the key. So that the way the person thinks helps you to understand the architecture of it. Start again and just go nice and easy. The way Chuck was. Yeah, just nice and easy. Mm -hmm. This morning, I was thinking about my inability to cry. Uh -huh. And yet, I have thousands of reasons to shed tears. And among these reasons, one dominates all the others. Write that reason so I can exist. I can't love. I don't know how to love. I'm incapable of love. Great, and I'm just going to stop you right away. So sorry. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to urge you as you're thinking um, through it to be super literal with what uh, he is saying. So write that reason. I can't love. That's the reason. So that the mm -hmm. so that the task that he's giving himself is then reflected in the next line. Am I making sense when I say that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Write that reason. Ah, there it is. I can't love. Take take it from write that reason and try to really just um, be super literal in the way you think. And I would rarely ever give this note as the person you're talking to, but really consider the person you're talking to is yourself. Mm. For this, Beautiful. I, I put that in your Beautiful. head. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Right. No one but yourself. All right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Take it from the beginning if you want, and that's a great note. This morning, I was thinking about my inability to cry. Sorry, Kevon, yourself, mm. yourself. Talk mm. to yourself. This is to yourself, okay? Mm. And it's frustrating. This morning, I was thinking about my inability to cry. Excellent. And yet, I, I have thousands of reasons to shed tears. And among these reasons, one dominates all the others. Write that reason so I can exist. Write that reason why? So I can exist. I can't love. Excellent. I don't know how to love. I'm incapable of love. I can't believe that somebody loves me. I, I have never loved. Loving is beyond me. 
no one has ever loved me. No one can ever love me. When it comes to love, I'm like a man dying of thirst in the desert. As far as he can see, nothing but dunes and mirage is the only oasis. He runs, driven by his thirst. He runs, and sand fills his mouth, down to his lungs, down to his parched liver. So, the philosopher tells me, reflect. The anthropologist tells me, observe. The wise man tells me, accept. The psychoanalyst tells me, recognize. I'm just going to stop you because I want you to understand why those professionals told you, um, identified your state, because that image mm -hmm. that you really started to give me was that you ran and you are literally suffocated with sand, right? So you run. Mm -hmm. So I just need you to, to, to just, I, uh, allow me to understand what happened, right? Take it back mm -hmm. and you're telling yourself, I did try to do that. I did try to do that. And this is what happened. Mm -hmm. Take it from Iran. That was a really good adjustment. Iran. Mm -hmm. He runs, driven by uh -huh. his thirst. Uh -huh. He runs. Uh -huh. And sand fills his mouth down to his lungs, down uh -huh. to his parched liver. So the <laughs> philosopher tells Says me to reflect, what? the anthropologist tells me observe, the wise man tells me accept, and the psychoanalyst tells me recognize. And all I want is to have someone touch my skin and leave a mark of affection out of love. Beautiful. I walk and I think of all of the lovers sleeping in each other's arms. I'm not them. I'm already, I'm already beyond this world. I contemplate the world and the world as it appears to me doesn't disgust me. Nor do I want it to disgust me with all its horrors, the wars, the rapes, the massacres, the injustice, the spilled blood. It doesn't disgust me. Loneliness has thickened my skin so the world can no longer disgust me. Oh. oh, yeah. I'm sad to say that we have to move on, but just a quick thing, Kayvon, I, I, Jessica, you can conclude with that, but again, it was absolutely key to know who you were talking to. And it was absolutely key to actually know what you're saying. It's not, whenever you see a list, we've talked about this, there's lists in Shakespeare, they're not just lists. There's a reason why he talks about a wise man versus an analyst. The wiser, these guys are telling me this, you know what I mean? There is room for a human reaction, but there's also, there's the, there's the, there's the, the precise forensic nature of having those different people. Nothing is random. Do you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. Jessica, if you want to finish before Absolutely. we Absolutely. No, pizza. that was a beautiful way to say it. And I, and it, and it is, you know, the, 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 the list that occurs at the end, it is like, the plagues, you know, it, it, and, and, and he, he, you know, it's, ex it's exactly what Chuck is saying. You, you can have a, an emotional reaction to not being able to feel anything as long as the whole speech has, has, has been sort of motivated to say, wake up, right? You have to yeah. say to yourself, wake up, mm -hmm. right? And that's that's beautiful. I, I think you understand what 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 uh, the the needs are for that. That's beautiful. Thank you. I'm just going to say to guys because I see Isaiah raised his hand. I want to get through other people. So hopefully, if you guys can stick around and Jessica can save your yeah. questions, and we'll leave a few minutes at the back. I just want to make sure everyone gets a chance to work. So Nikita, can we call you up next? 
Uh, my name is Nikita. I uh, grew up in Westchester, New York, and I also went to NYU and I studied at, yeah. um, at New Studio on Broadway. Um, my monologue is from the play Test Match by Kate Atwell. Um, I play, it's about cricket players and I play a British cricket player. So it's in a British accent. It's not perfect, but I'm doing my best. So, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> You really can just fuck off. That tosser I dated, I got a text from that fucking sod. It says, shame about the rain, but maybe not a shame as you were losing. You know, the thing about him is this, the thing about him is he's a cricket boy. They're so uppity. I'm done with them. You know, the thing about cricket boys versus rugby boys is this, rugby boys get off that field They've been scrumming around and they just want to fuck, fuck, fuck. Just fuck, 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 because I got all that testosterone up inside them. And they're like bricks, those boys. Like tanks. Tanks have been at war. And that's the reason why you should date rugby boys. Cricket boys, on the other hand, have not been at war. They will not give a fuck about fucking. They will want to talk and talk and talk about the game. Rugby is all these tank men at war, fucking smashing into each other, rubbing the willies accidentally on each other, and so then you fuck them. And they like puppies. And that's really nice. You know, the other thing about rugby boys, and this might be controversial to say, but the other thing about rugby boys is that they're just nicer, like generally. Well, you know, they're playing a real team sport there. Like, unlike cricket boys, you, you can't be throwing matches and fixing games in rugby. So the whole mindset is a different, like, mindset. I mean, yeah, we're a team and all that. But moment to moment of the game, we're all basically responsible for doing our own thing. It's not got that pack mentality, or banded together, or in it together. Uh, look, I love these girls, don't get me wrong. I would literally die for them. Literally, I would. But when I'm out there facing someone bowling, it's just on me. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, tell me, okay, just give me a little background on the piece. It's a really fun piece. Give me a little yeah. background of it. So it's about um, three British cricket players and three Indian cricket players. Um, their, their game stopped because um, there, it started raining. So they're all in the locker room together. So they're basically having this really, really back and forth conversation, locker room talk. This character uh, obviously just got this text. And the funny thing about this is she's talking, but no one's really listening to her. But she thinks people are listening to her. So she just keeps going and everyone's like, oh, she's still talking. And there's so much conversation going on. And she's just, she was hurt. My view of it is that she was hurt by this text, but doesn't want to show that she's hurt. So this is her way of reflecting that rejection off of her. Um, but no one okay. really cares. And she thinks that these other five people are totally listening. They're just, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. There's an animation of freedom of the way you were just talking to me. That is actually the way I think um, the complete um, joie de vivre that you just had in your is is, is the, it's gonna be the saving grace of your um, getting into this piece. Because um, the, uh, I, I, think that's, I think that's the energy that it needs to start with, just, just with that one. Uh, um, and I wanna hear the first, can I just have the first four lines pop? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You really can just fuck off. That tosser I dated, I got a text from that fucking sod. Says, shame about the rain, but maybe not a shame as you were losing. Great. I mean, the, the trick also, uh, I'm going to get a Chuck up here just in terms of accents, uh, which of course, it's always crazy because that is Chuck's accent. So you're sort of <laughs> caught with like, <laughs> no, 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 don't be sorry. This is what no, you, you should No, you did a good do. job. You did a good oh, job. You did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you want, and I think as Chuck is probably, um, this is a, a great opportunity to talk about this. You want to sink your teeth into it, even though you have this feeling that, ah, maybe that's the not exact pronunciation. You just want to bite into that accent regardless, because it's limiting your connection physically and emotionally. 
Um, would you want to say a word about accents as somebody's probably playing? Absolutely. For someone who I'm now on the other side of the pond, so most of the time I'm being asked to do an American accent and something like that. And I, I will just always say that just, they just, you've got to, especially if you find yourself having to do it, really trust that if you lay, if you completely get into the character and what you're saying, we're not going to give a fuck to use that word. You, you know what I mean? The moment I see someone super aware of their accent, even if it's a better accent than so, I'm super aware that they're super aware of the accent, you know, because it's weird as the, as the scene went on, you relaxed into it and it became more, more British. So you know, it's right at the beginning that it was at its most disconnected. And I would say, rather than thinking of doing a British accent for a British guy watching you, think of the fact that you've just got the text and you've sworn at someone before you know you've sworn. Well, he can just fuck off. Okay. Do you know what I mean? And I swear to God, if you can, and that's a release for you as an actor, because as, as soon as, it's always about that, how you start. I know I fucked up an audition from the first line of my audition because <laughs> it's all about how you enter it you know what i mean mm -hmm. so don't be careful about sounding just you've got the text all you think you've done the groundwork you've drilled the sounds mm -hmm. it's all right yeah. do you know what i mean yeah. just go straight into it okay great he really can just fuck off that tosser i dated i got a text from that fucking sod says, shame about the rain, but maybe not a shame as you were losing. You know, the thing about him is this. The thing about him is he's a cricket boy. They're so Start it right now. Start the whole thing right now, exactly where you are. He can just fuck off. He really can just fuck off. <laughs> that tosser yeah. I hated. I got a text yeah, yeah. from that fucking sod. Says, shame about the rain, but maybe not a shame as you were losing. <laughs> you know, the thing about him is this. The thing about him is he's a cricket boy. They're so uppity. I'm done with them. The thing about cricket boys versus rugby boys is this. Rugby boys get off that field, they've been scrumming around, and they just want to fuck, fuck, fuck. Just fuck, 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 because they got all that testosterone up inside them. Right. And they're like bricks, those boys, like tanks. Tanks, been at war. And, and, and that's the reason why you should date rugby boys. Cricket boys, on the other hand, have not been at war. They will, they will give a fuck about fucking. They will want to talk and talk and talk about the game. The rugby is all these tank men at war, fucking smashing into each other, rubbing the willies accidentally on each other. And, and so then you fuck them and they're like puppies. And that's really nice. You know, the other thing about rugby boys, and, and this might be controversial to say, but the other thing about rugby boys is they're really just nicer, like generally. But you know, they're playing a real team sport there. Like unlike cricket boys, you can't be throwing matches and fixing games in rugby. So, so the whole mindset is a different like mindset. I mean, yeah, we're a team and all that, but moment to moment of the game, we're all basically responsible for doing our own thing. It's not got that pack mentality or banded together or in it together. Uh, look, I love these girls, don't get me wrong. I would literally die for them. Literally, I would. But when I'm up there facing someone bowling, it's just on me. Wait, I'm going to stop you. This, well, that's the end of it, right? So I don't have to. Okay. Let me just add, there was an excellent adjustment. And it is exactly as Chuck said. You know, sometimes we do realize that, ah, it's like four lines in that I click in. Mm -hmm. So it, it, obvious technique, you just keep, uh, you, you try to dial it back till you're clicking in at the beginning. So that moment you feel like, oh, that's the space I started in. You have to just practice, practice, practice. That's where, you know, that, that, that's what you should be feeling at the very get-go. That's what you should be feeling with your voice. But this is a this is a really good opportunity for me just to talk about two things. This this text allows something very specific and very strong for you to hold on to. The idea of leave it to a, a, a British play to afford you this, but the status thing, and we all talk about status, right? A lot of that's a whole concept in acting, but uh, just. Just identify to me what, what, um, 
allows me to say status is something you can hang your hat on in that piece. What language, what, what does she talk about that makes that seem like a valid idea? I mean, I, I can hear it so clearly. And I wonder, what is she doing at the beginning between the cricket players? Just, just, just kind of riff on that for me, because I think it's going to give you mileage. I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm not sure that what, I... Um... What, is status, what does status mean to you in relationship to this piece? What does status mean to you? As in, like, uh, who, who she is in comparison to the people in... Yes, the... yes. Well, right. what is she also playing? in this piece, I'm playing a British woman, and there's, there's Indian women in this right. piece. That itself right. is status. Start the piece right now and just look for every moment where status... And keep the pace up. Just keep that pace up. Because right. I'm just going to tell you one other thing. The logistics of this piece would not allow you to go that slowly. Um, you would recognize they weren't listening to you. Right. So the logic, you're, you're, you're operating on a really solid level. That's why I'm going to ask you to just look at these two other factors, sure. speed and status. Just go right now. And, right, and a ready. little thing, just a little thing is in the sta high status, which cricket and rugby, they only played in the big, in the private, both of them are. But if there's a sport that takes itself really seriously, that is just the, it's cricket. So there's something really sordid and slumming it about saying you want to fuck rugby people. Does that make sense? Exactly. Yes. That, okay? yeah. 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 Excellent. Check. Thank you for that tidbit. All right. Okay. Interesting. Okay. What the? You really can just fuck off. That tosser I dated. I got a text from that fucking sod says, shame about the rain, but maybe not a shame as you were losing. You know, the thing about him is this. The thing about him is he's a cricket boy. They're so uppity. I'm done with them. The thing about cricket boys versus rugby boys is this. The rugby boys, they get off that field. They've been scrumming around, and they just want to fuck, fuck, fuck. Just fuck, 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 because they got all that testosterone up inside them. Start the piece again right away. Mm -hmm. You don't have to look at us. Fuck off. That talks her out. I got a text from that fucking sod. It says, shame about the rain, but maybe not a shame as you were losing. The thing about him is this. The thing about him is he's a cricket boy. They're so okay. I'm done with them. The thing about cricket boys versus rugby boys is this. Rugby boys get off that field. They've been scrumming around, right? And they just, they just want to fuck, fuck, fuck. Just fuck, fuck, fuck. Because they got all that testosterone up inside them. And they're like bricks, those boys. Like tanks. Tanks have been at war. And that's the reason why you should date a rugby boy. Cricket boys, on the other hand, have not been at war. They will not give a fuck about fucking. They will want to talk and talk and talk about the game. Rugby is all these tank men at war, fucking smashing into each other, rubbing their willies accidentally on each other, and so they fuck them. And they're like puppies. And that's really nice. <laughs> the other thing about rugby boys, and, and this might be controversial to say, but the other thing about rugby boys is they're just nicer. Like, generally. But you, they're playing a real team sport there. Like, unlike cricket boys, you, you can't be throwing matches and fixing games in rugby. So, so the whole mindset is a different, like, mindset. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're a team and all that, but moment to moment of the game, we're all basically responsible for doing our own thing. It's not got that pack mentality, all banded together, all in it together. I mean, look, I love these girls, don't get me wrong. I would literally die for them. Literally, I would. But when I'm up there facing someone bowling, it's just on me. Great, great, great. We can't, we probably can't go back. The, 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 um, like the seven eighths of it is exactly living in the place um, that I totally think it should live. And it's thrilling and really funny. I would say the last part where you slow down and become self-reflective actually probably um, is a result of you getting out of control. So mm -hmm. even though there, I don't want to presuppose the, the place where you get out of control. It comes toward the end and you kind of, it's, it's, there's a self, a lack of self-consciousness or this piece wouldn't work, right? Because you're in the room with the cricket girls and the rub, and the rugby girls. So I, I just think it's wonderful. We, we can't, we can't um, keep massaging it, but you totally, I, I, I love please. to see when somebody understands it. What were you going to say, Chuck? 
I just said it's a great, it's a really good piece for you. And Thank the you. throwaway and the, 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 the general thing I would say, especially when it's an English writer, is that you've got the hardest thing to navigate is, is the English people tend to live with irony, whereas over here we tend to live with more sarcasm. Do you know what I mean? So irony means that you sort of throw it away when you're making your most point, whereas here we tend to like smack it up and right. send it up. Do you know what I mean? So, and that's a status thing. Is even if when you're saying, you know, whatever, you know, the thing about, you know, it's you, you, the, the, your most powerful point you can almost throw away and then get on to the next thing from that mm -hmm. because it's almost too shocking to dwell on. But right. you, you know, it's a really good piece for you. And I think, Wonderful. I think you, you, it was really funny. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Let's have uh, Gabby. Hi. Hello. Hey. Hi. Hi. So my name is Gabby. Um, I uh, went to school for acting at Lambda along with. Claire, who is watching. <laughs> um, so what else? I've just been working for a while and I feel so nervous because I wanted to work on some Shakespeare because my, my training was like a classical training, but I've never gotten to do any classical work professionally, which maybe is an indication of something, but I thought uh, I would just try Viola. Why not, you know? Beautiful. Okay. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside hath not charmed her. She made good view of me. Indeed, so much that sure me thought my, her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak in starts, distractedly. She loves me, sure. The cunning of her passion. Actually, can I start over? I'm like not in it. All. I'm just saying the words. Is that okay? Totally, honey. And I, I oh. always have honesty. I'm always, I, I get so nervous that oh. I love people who have the same. Yes. Yeah. Also, I'm like the audacity. Just like, let's do Viola. Like, I feel, you know what I mean? But just like, start like, anyway. right now. You're in the okay, exact, okay, okay. right, right place. Right. Here, there right. you go. Start talking. Okay. She, she left no, I, I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Excellent. Fortune for <laughs> my outside hath not charmed her. She made good view of me. Indeed, so much that sure me thought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak in starts distractedly. She loves me, sure. The cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lord's rings, why he left her none. I am the man, if it be so, as tis. Poor lady. She were better love a dream. Disguise, I see thou art a wickedness, wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy is it for the proper false in women's waxen hearts to set their forms? Alas, our frailty is the cause, not we. For such as we are made of, such we be. How will this fadge? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him, and she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, <laughs> now, alas, the day. What thriftless sighs will poor Olivia breathe? Oh, time! You must untangle this, not I, for it is too hard a knot for me to untie. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I quite love that piece for you, and I'm very glad you're doing it. And okay, thanks. <laughs> I'm thrilled you're doing it. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna offer you a couple of thoughts um, just about the the way in which you navigate um, her thinking, really. Okay. Yeah. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna advocate that when she, when you take a beat to. Um, to reflect on something that your your reflect that 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 what you say after that has to actually anchor you into a new moment. So you take a beat before you say, for instance, she loves she loves me. What is that line at the beginning? Um, she she loves me. Sure, the cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. Right. So that beat that you took before that that pause did not did not bear any fruit with yeah. that line. And talk to me about, so, 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 so what happens in that pause? Is that actually something that you have just rhythmically, so we do all this stuff, the, the architecture of Shakespeare, um, we kind of 
learn even more rigidly because we feel we'll be at sea if we don't do that, right? Mm -hmm. So I think you can afford yourself the, the, the marker that, that that line, she loves me, sure, that's, right? What is, what is exactly, that's... She, she loves me, sure. The, right. cu the cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. Great, that's what it is, yeah. right? That, that, yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Uh, none of uh, what is it? Oops. <laughs> um, it, uh, none of my lord's ring. Why he left her none. I am the man, if it be so, as tis. Poor lady. Right. So, so, so just yeah. work through that for me one more uh -huh. time. Yeah. She loves me, right? None of uh -huh. my. Just, I, I, yeah. I, right. There you go. You're in the exact right. She, yeah. There you go. She loves me, sure. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish, churlish messenger. Yeah, next. None minute. of my lord's ring. Why he left her none. I am the man, if it be so, as tis. <laughs> Poor lady. Oh God. She had better love a dream. Disguise. I see thou art a wickedness, wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy is it for the proper false in women's waxen hearts to set their forms? Alas, our frailty is the cause, not we. For such as we are made of, such we be. I'm going to give you one more thought. That, that, was a, uh -huh. that was an excellent adjustment. I'm going to ask you again for another place that you can hold, yeah. which is the way she thinks, right? So you're very interesting in the way you think and, and the way you articulate yourself and how honest you are. These are just three things I've noticed about you in the last 30 seconds. Give me that, 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 that line, how easy, God, how easy. Again, yeah. let's, let's talk back about what Chuck was asking. Who are we speaking to? And obviously this is... This is to yourself, right? Yeah. Right? God, yeah, how, yeah, yeah. How easy? I think it is. I mean, how easily? What do you say? How easily? How easy? How, how easy is it for the proper false in women's waxen hearts to set their forms? Alas, uh -huh. our frailty is the cause, not we. For such as we are made of, such we be. What, what is the meaning of that line? How easy, this is such a cliche so, Shakespeare approach. Yeah, so I, 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 the meaning of it is, uh, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm navigating the shock of how my false presentation of being a man could, mm -hmm. could charm her and make her fall in love with me. And it's like the softness and the, the willingness towards love of women that allows us to believe in this charade. And That's it's- beautiful. Right. What is that? I mean, just in my, in your description of that, just in your description, it's quite embarrassing then to be a woman. Right. Well, I mean, I don't necessarily, I don't agree with that, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that like, is that's like, the shame. Yeah. Because it's also the, the, yeah. And you've yeah. Gone and fallen in love with, um, what's his name again? The, you know, Orsino. Orsino. <laughs> so you're, despite yourself, you've fallen in love with Orsino just as is. <laughs> That is, yeah. you know what I mean? So you're talking yes. about her. Yes, you exactly. That. And that's what Jessica is saying about those pauses as you gear shift and stuff is they're just not there because it's at the end of a line. It's like, I get it. I get it. I'm right. a moron. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. It, it, that's and, exactly. And that will work the better you take us to the other place before that. And then you mm. go, you know what I mean? It's all about playing each thing to the full and bring right. in yourself to it and jessica was right. right about the energy and the honesty and stuff we sometimes feel a quick thing is we sometimes feel with shakespeare because it's shakespeare it's 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 formal <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? we get we just get married to the formal of it and the stuff like well i know what this goes in but i can't overdo do it so i'll try and do it in a way no it's written that way for that whole thing. And believe me, when you can go really to that whole thing about, look, I didn't give a ring, so that, I mean, what the fuck is she talking about? <laughs> woman. Do you know what I mean? Right. You yes, yes. I want to it. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So where should I go from? Should I go from, go from, from the from same, the, God, from, um, from, uh, from how easily, how, oh, how, yeah. how easy, uh, right, exactly, how easy, go from there, go, yeah. yeah. How Easy. How easy is it? How, how, how easy is it for the proper false in women's waxen hearts to set their forms? 
alas, our frailty is the cause, not we, for such as we are made of, such we be. How will this badge? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him, and she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As what I is that line? Am, what, wait, wait, so you what will become that, what, of this? What, that's what, all. What? She's like, what's, so yeah. just, just, yeah. just riffing on what, just riffing on what Chuck was saying, right? This is this crazy thing that happens with Shakespeare, is that we make these, we, we, we work our way through very complicated ideas. And then there is a simple line, like what will become of this, that we yes. make complicated. Yes. <laughs> that line is not complicated. That line we say all the time, what the fuck is gonna happen? That's all that line is. So right. the complicated ideas, yes, you can paint. What will become of this? Just give me that line. What is that line? What, what will become of this? Right. As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am women, woman, yeah. Now, alas, the day. What thriftless sighs will poor Olivia breathe? Okay, now I have to say something. When, so the next line, line is O time, and I have a problem in Shakespeare with the O's. I always feel self-conscious with yeah. saying, oh, and I know, I, I don't know what you have to, like, that's just me. I, I, always get if, in if my head right the o, if you've done the o exactly like you just did it it would have worked <laughs> really okay <laughs> yes. do you know what i mean it's like it's like it's 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 so weird jessica i don't know if you ever thought of it but it's it's yeah. a hard thing i'm not gonna lie to you i mean you know um i did othello and he has about five thousand <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so like what the note we gave um the pre i've forgotten you i'm so bad with names i'm just so, nikita yeah. that we gave the key to is that um, th the sound of the word, and Kristen Linklater is coming on later, and I'm sure she'll talk about this. It's, it's more important about what the sound evokes in you and why you're saying it rather than the word. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Just like when she goes, fuck, if you're fixated on the word fuck, you're never going to actually say fuck in a way that means anything. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So you see the thing, and the guy goes, oh, 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 <laughs> as, as Shakespeare often does. And you're asking yourself, why? Why does he give Leia ha five howls? It's not so you can see how many ways you can say howl. That's when you're, you screw yourself over, is you feel something and that word comes out of you. So if, you're, if you've built the right frustration leading up to this, you love it. And us women, we're just so pathetic. We fall in love and then, I mean, how is this? Oh, you know, I mean, it could be a million things. <laughs> I love that. But it cannot be is the word O. Right. <laughs> as soon as it's that, and you're thinking of it in those terms, it's never gonna be genuine. It might yeah. come out as O, but it's got to be rooted in why you've got to this place. You know what I mean? Yes, thank you. That Just, is really it's helpful. Funny, you went O, oh, and it was like, well, that would have been perfect, because that's frustration. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. I would thank love, you. because we're finishing definitely at 4.15, I would love, 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 if it's okay with you, Jessica, yeah. if you just go through the whole thing, whatever, with that, so that we can hit that O, because it'd be unfair of you to do it, yeah? And just yeah. absolutely. Okay. absolutely. I'm gonna say one last thing about these Shakespeare uh, speeches as well, which is just that we feel like we're in jail a lot of time when we're doing them. We're so conscious. Those short lines, any short, any line that you feel like, oh, this is so contemporary, that's your, get out of jail free card. Okay, That's your, cool. I can do whatever I want card. As long as it feels honest, right? So take, make those short lines super contemporary. Make those sounds super, right? Just guttural. That's, that's the gift. Awesome, thank you. Go for it, go for it. All right, right. Now. All right. Go. Uh, imaginary corset you've put yourself in right now. You're not yes. wearing a corset, okay? Yes, Just yes, thank you. I, that's really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I left no ring with her. What means this lady? <laughs> Fortune forbid my, mm -mm, one second, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, do, I got it, all right. <laughs> I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside hath not charmed her. <laughs> she made good view of me, indeed, so much that Shermie thought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak in starts, distractedly.
<laughs> she loves me sure. Excellent. The cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lords ring why he left her none. I am the man, if it be so, as tis. Poor lady. She were better love a dream. Disguise, I see thou art a wickedness, wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy is it for the proper faults in women's waxen hearts to set their forms? Alas, our frailty is the cause, not we, for such as we are made of, such we be. How will this fetch? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him, and she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now alas the day. What thriftless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? Oh, time! You must untangle this, not I. It is too hard a knot for me to untie. Wasn't that easy? <laughs> yes. It was a lot easier not to feel constricted by the form, yeah. And, and bringing yourself to it. That's why he gave those sounds and that's why he invented words because he knew there were feelings and emotions <laughs> there wasn't enough words for so he gave you sounds he gave yeah. you zooms he gave you all that stuff sometimes he didn't understand what it is for a man to kill his own wife so he just kept giving him oh 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 until the actor navigate your way through that because it's so fucked up it's about being taking that as a tool to help you as jessica said not something that constrains you but right. really beautiful work. You should do more classical work. I can't believe that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Jessica, one last person. Uh, Holly. Lovely. Is Holly still there? Hey, Holly. Hey, how are you? Oh, great. Uh, there you are. Where are you? Where are you? I'm in London. Ah. Wonderful. And uh, tell us, what, did, did you, uh, uh, did, did you uh, ever uh, study in the States or do you just find us on fine uh, I, I, I've never trained in the States. Huh? I came close and then London stole me back. Um, yeah, and but I did you, train in London. Uh, what, what are you going to do for us today? I would love to hear more about your life, but I, I'm so anxious about the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be quick. I am um, going to do a speech from People, Places and Things. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Dennis... Uh, uh, Duncan, Duncan McMillan. Oh, oh, Duncan, I'm so sorry. Anyway, yes, I like that play. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wonder if I should... I'm going to move to the couch. Do it. How? That's okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay. With the play, you get instructions, stage directions, dialogue. Someone clothes you, tells you where to be and when. You get to live life's most intense moments over and over again with all the boring bits left out. And you get to practice for weeks and you're applauded. Then you get changed, leads through the stage door Bus home, back to reality, all the boring bits left back in, waiting, temping, waiting tables, babysitting, cleaning, endless shits and missing opportunities because you need to pay rent. Answering telephones and serving canapes, nothing permanent, no plans, can't get a mortgage or pay for a car. Audition comes in and you try to look right. 
find yourself sitting in a room surrounded by people who look just like you all after the same part and you never hear back or if you do hear back you find yourself sitting around in a rehearsal room or backstage making less than you did temping but you make friends with these people little family you fall in love off on stage and off and then when it's over you never see each other again and you try not to take it personally when people not as good as you get the parts when you go from the sexy ingenue to the tired mother of three but you keep on going because sometimes if you're really lucky you get to stand on stage and say things that are absolutely true you get to do things that feel more real to you more authentic more meaningful than anything in your own life and you get to speak poetry you get to say things that you would never think of but which become yours when you say them i played antigone and every night my heart broke for her dead brother and then when my own brother died i didn't feel anything i missed the funeral because i was at a matinee this is superb just start the whole speech right there just start it right there just start the speech with a play you get instructions stage directions dialogue someone clothes you tells you where to be and when you get to live life's most intense moments over and over again with all the boring bits left out good keep going you get to practice for weeks and you're applauded <laughs> and then when it's over you get changed you leave through the stage door you get the bus home back to reality all the boring bits left in Wait, waiting temping waiting tables babysitting cleaning endless shits and missing opportunities because you need to pay rent serving canapes and answering telephones nothing permanent no plans can't get a mortgage or pay for a car an audition comes in you try to look right find yourself sitting in a room surrounded by people who look just like you all after the same part never hear back more waiting or if you do get the part you're sitting around in a rehearsal room or backstage making less than you did temping you make friends with these people a little family you fall in love on stage and off and then when it's over you never see each other again and you try not to take it personally when people not as good as you get the parts when you go from the sexy ingenue to the tired mother of three but you keep on going because sometimes if you're really lucky you get to stand on stage and say things that are absolutely true you get like to do what? keep going you get to do things that are more real to you, more authentic, more meaningful than anything in your own life. And you get to speak poetry. You get to say things that you would never think of, but which become yours when you say them. I played Antigone and every night my heart broke for her dead brother. And then when my own brother died, I didn't feel anything. Keep going. I missed the funeral because I was at a matinee I'm not avoiding talking to the group because I've got something to hide. It's the opposite. If I'm not in character, I'm not sure I'm even entirely there. I'm already dead, I'm nothing. I find reality pretty difficult. I find the business of getting out of bed and getting on with the day, I find it really hard. I find picking up the telephone to be a mammoth fucking struggle. The numbers on my inbox, the friends who don't wanna see me anymore, the Instagram photos and bullshit and mass shootings and fake news. I find the fact that we are all just atoms and one day we just stop and then we're dust in the ground. I find that 
overwhelmingly disappointing. And I wish I could feel otherwise. I wish I could be more like you or my mother to believe that things are meaningful and predetermined and we're somewhere on this between the start and the finish line but I can't I can't because I care about what's actually verifiably true I care about what's true you're able to you're able to forfeit rationale for a comforting untruth so how are you supposed to help me you're looking at the world through such a tight filter that you're barely even living in it You're barely living. Drugs and alcohol have never let me down. They've always loved me. There are substances that I can put in my bloodstream that make the world perfect. Now that is the only absolute truth in this universe. I'm being difficult with you because you're trying to take that away from me. So, well, so sorry. Acting gives me the same thing that drugs and alcohol do. It's just, um, well, finding a good part, part is harder. Great, that's it, right? That's yeah, it. Such a great speech. That's, you did that, you, okay, so just, to, I know we have, we're so over time and I need to ask you a couple questions. When I had you just start again from that place, um, it, it just, it's a, just a wonderful piece for, and you, you really have a, lo, a tremendous command with it. When I had you start again, did it reboot you in any way that was new to you or did anything come out of that rebooting that was helpful? Absolutely. I mean, my heart was thumping out of my chest so that the, just starting in it from a place of adrenaline was, <laughs> I mean, obviously I have my own adrenaline blah blah but that was like a whole nother thing and I found myself character and Holly trying to kind of control it and I think that gave it something else to attach to well it's it's a very interesting piece and and really what I would want to do if we were to continue to work was to show you the structure of the piece and yeah. and and this is so difficult for us when we're inside of it to understand the structure but 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 what you were at a point when I stopped you where you were completely embodying this joy of what acting is, right? So the piece goes from her describing acting to describing what it feels like without acting to describing what it feels like to audition to describing back what it feels like to acting. She's holding on to that, right? So that's her journey. And then she says, she says, nothing, I, nothing really matches that except for drugs and alcohol. Is that the journey of the piece? Yeah. Because she, there's, I mean, that's it in such a quick nutshell. Yeah. Um, but, but that is what this person really, uh, really, you really ride this journey of her trying to find something else and coming up short and then describing that drugs and alcohol are the only thing that match that. And I really needed to see what kind of energy and passion you have when you are on that high and that high is beautiful for you and that's what you kind of um, were able to accomplish when you went back and I just there's a few lines and then I know we have to cut out but I just want you to notate these and look back at your script and see if it resonates in any way for you guys i'm such a huge like if we were actually to be working i'm such a huge fan of writing all of this stuff down which i imagine you're all big writers anyway um but um but just because the architecture of the work we do is very hard to remember so hard and so it's all about creating patterns where we're, we're rewriting scripts for ourselves so we understand how the architecture works what is the line that leads up to the word boring bits? What is, what is the, the text around that? Uh, the first time it's you get to live the most intense moments of a life with all the boring bits left out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's all she was going to say. In my mind, hearing that, that's all she was going to say. What does she say after that? 
What's the next word? Words, she says, um, to get back to the other, the other boring bit, mm -hmm. you mean. What, what, uh, she says, without all the boring bits left out, what does she say after that? Oh, and you get to practice. Right, right, because in real life, you don't get to practice. Yeah. Right, you just fuck up a lot. You never get to practice, right? So that was the end after the boring bits left out. And then this new idea, which you very, you have a wonderful quality that's just genuine and it doesn't have to be exploitive of any idea or anything. It's just, and you get to practice, which is the new thought, which is what launches, launches you into the next portion, which is about things that you can't control because you can't practice. Great. Um, what is the line around make, make friends? Um, make these friendships a little family. You fall in love on stage and off. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then when it's over, you never see each other again. Great. And that's, 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 that's the, the end of that section to me from what she said. What, what does she say after that? And you try not to take it personally when people not as good as you get the parts. Right, right, right. So, so that I think I, that's just to me that I just wanted to alert you to the fact that you never see each other again, right? She's, she's constantly, it's like this speech is really her, it seems to me what you're, what you're doing, and I don't want to direct it, but, but it's, it's, it's this um, attempt to make sense of why acting and getting higher, the only things that, um, that, that keep you on a, on a certain level, right? The, um, you get to do it. What is the line around you get to do it? Mm. Uh, but sometimes if you're really lucky, you get to stand on stage and say, and say but, things that are absolutely true. Right, right, right. Okay. That, that was just actually, that was just quite a, um, that was just quite, um, uh, that's a, a quite a nice shift in the piece for you. Uh, and, and, um, I'm just going to, um, I'm gonna advocate for the way you did it just then in which the Antigone and the death of the brother and the death of, and the, and the old personal experience that there was a simplicity with the way you did that, that just identifies something we talked about at the very, very beginning, which is that, that that would normally, and most actors I'm sure at some point when you worked through that might've been more emotional or less emotional. The simple relating that sequence to us the way you did it the second time was was incredibly affecting and it's just the the um I, it, it just exemplifies things that within a monologue we often look as markers of how emotional we can get and the way you did that which is also the way um ultimately we looked at the piece from dance nation and the way we looked at the clear glass marbles is what i'm not advocating no emotion i'm advocating storytelling yeah. It is one fifteen, and I and I. Um, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I just want to be able to round up, give you a chance to round up with people. Um, Diane, I'm so sorry. We oh, sorry. maybe try and come uh, back down. We're, we're going right through till the end of May now, so maybe we can get you on again to speak to someone. But I, I just wanted to say one more thing for Holly before that is that it comes back that starting the second time in that state gave you so much room to navigate the speech. You, when you first did it, you sort of did it as the beginning of a speech yes. looking for the build. But when you came back, I mean, think of, I always say the, the most, Ellen Novak says this, you, there's a, her book, um, Taming the Cyclops is about this thin, but everyone should get a copy of it about how to, that starting state you're in mm -hmm. before you speak a word will make and break that audition or that speech. And starting it where Jessica told you, where it's like, I fucking, and it's logical. It makes sense. I fucking love acting. That's what's <laughs> great about it. It's all this, it's all this. And you get to talk, and then you talk to people, and you fucking, and then suddenly when you got to the middle and took that gravitas about, you'd earned it. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't see it go the other way, where you're building to the gravitas. We're surprised by the sudden gravity. Where's the girl that loves acting? Where did she go? Yeah. That draws you in. So guys, one of the biggest things that has come out of everyone that's saw today is know where you're starting and know who you're talking to. And, and that's, that just frees you up completely, you know? And I think Jessica making you go back and start that was absolute genius because that's where every logical decision starts there, especially where you end. 
which mm-hmm. is a big fuck you to taking my drugs and acting away. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it, it's, 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 it's navigation. We sometimes think means start gentle, soft, then build and whatever. <laughs> navigation can start with chaos and then the tectonic plate shift. You know, it can start anyway. It just has to have a journey, you know, and the journey has to make logical sense to you, you know? Which um, you know, you don't require a director for that. A director may have an idea about that, but you, you, you know what makes logical sense to you. Absolutely. And, and I, I had Michael Greif on yesterday who sends his love, Jessica. Oh, and yeah. He agrees with two of the other. I was saying that how Richard A, I believe, is the one that says he does 90% of the work in casting. And that means that when you come up to do those scenes in the play, they don't want to have to navigate it for you. You've done that for them. Do you know what I mean? And so it's really important to make those decisions of where I'm starting, who I'm talking to, and, and get rid of that sense of the arc. <laughs> you know, we always talk about the arc and it freaking gets in our way. Just be there, be in the moment and do it. You know what I mean? Um, Jessica Hecht, I mean, you're a genius. Oh, you're so- guys are beyond Thank thrilled you. to have worked with you. You guys can all unmute and give her a round of applause oh, if you want to. You- Thank you. Thank you. It's such a joy, and we all go through the same thing, guys. It's a beautiful thing that we're all together because we can share how mutual the the pitfalls and the joys are. You're really open-hearted, wonderful actors. Thank you so much.